grateful and thankful uh, to be here with you today. Uh, here at the city, looking around and seeing so many wonderful smiling faces. Uh, I'm honored and thankful for the opportunity to share here. We honor uh, our beloved bishop, my friend, my brother, amen. One of the most awesome men of God you ever want to meet, amen. Our Lord Bishop Timothy Joseph Clark, we're thankful. Uh, I'm so grateful for the call and the, and the confidence and trust for him to allow me to come back and share once again. Uh, it's been a little while since I've been here and I was starting to get nervous. I said, I must have didn't do too well La last time I, I was here. So, uh, but then he acknowledged the fact that uh, because that uh, God blessed us to launch a new ministry that he didn't want to pull me away from the ministry within the first year or so. And so I'm grateful that uh, uh, I had a chance to come back and redeem myself, Pastor Kelly. <laughs> Uh, try to, uh, uh, but they applied pressure. Uh, he and uh, uh, my sister Pam, uh, they applied pressure. They always reminded me of what happened before. And you know, I've, I've got a friend, a dear brother, share this real quick. Who, no matter what I do for him, he always say, uh, "Oh, that's good." So, what else you got? <laughs> what else you got? And that's how I feel. What What else you got? You know. Uh, we heard Psalm 23. We heard uh, what water does when it gets thirsty and all that kind of stuff and keep being reminded of that. And it's like, what, what else you got? What else you got? And so we pray that the Lord has something else to say to us again tonight. Uh, uh oh Okay. Uh, for those of you who've seen me before, I'm not quite the man I used to be. Uh, I'm down about 80 pounds uh, from where I was. And my Episcopal ring falls off from time to time because I don't have as much to hold it on. And they said they could resize it. I asked them, was they going to give me money for my gold that they take out? And they wasn't. So I said, I'll just keep my fist balled up. I'll keep a. <laughs> But anyway, we honor, we honor the first family, Lady C, and uh, the rest of the family. We're grateful and thankful for them, Pastor Kelly uh, uh, and Lady Kelly, uh, to, to all of you, my Heavenly Father's children. Um, even in his absence, my friend, my brother beloved, uh, Elder Bobby, uh, we pray for him and his family. Uh, I miss him whenever I come in. He's not able to be here. Uh, he's taken care of me for so many years. Uh, to all of the very fine officers of this great church and all of the leaders. Uh, to uh, my daughter, you know, who uh, is blessed to be here at first. Not, not Winston, he ain't my daughter. Uh, <laughs> she was standing back. There she go. Uh, but uh, uh, Tracy Shears, I'm, I'm so blessed of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that's my daughter. If I could steal some words from God, my daughter of whom I am well pleased, I'm grateful and thankful. And hallelujah. Uh, I don't want to keep you standing too long, but sometimes I get emotional when I watch her minister and um, when I think about her love for God and how God trusted me to raise her for him and that she has a relationship with him not through her daddy or not through her mother, uh, but she has a real relationship with God, and I'm grateful and thankful for that. To, my, to the woman that has my other rib, uh, Pastor Latanya, who's holding down things at home at uh, Fresh Wind Church, uh, we are grateful and thankful. Now it's preaching time. Uh, Matthew chapter 14, and I already know when I come to uh, First Church, I don't have to work hard because uh, Winston going to keep me covered and uh, my son Jared is up there, so he uh, hit them drums if y'all fall asleep. And uh, my brother Mike, amen. And brother Reggie, I haven't met him yet, but we're grateful and thankful. Amen. Uh, y'all, this whole music ministry is just excellent and wonderful. And I watch y'all week after week. But to be here with you in person and to feel your energy is just wonderful. Amen. To all the protocol and all, I don't know who to call. Uh, let's go. Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 14. One verse today. One verse today. Uh, verse 19. Verse 19. King James Version. 
Uh, um, and Sister Granada, if you don't have all my information, it's Tracy's fault. I gave it to her. <laughs> Matthew chapter 14, verse 19, King James Version, there these words are found. And he, meaning Jesus, commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. That's enough. Yeah, that's enough. I want to tag this text, y'all. I, I want to talk today about he's bringing out the best in me. Yeah, he, he's bringing out the best. Do me a favor, just in case I'm not preaching well, uh, if you would preach to your neighbor and tell your neighbor he's bringing out the best in me. Now turn to somebody else and say, he's bringing out the best in you too. Uh, bless us now, Father. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. May God be glorified. We the saints be edified. Heaven be satisfied. And the devil be horrified as disciples are in power. Jesus is exalted and his word is explained as we're seated in the presence of the Lord. God bless you. Thank you so much. Y'all going to help me preach? Hallelujah. Let's go to work. Let's go to work. Uh, let me begin today, y'all, uh, by, by first saying that our sermonic spotlight today shines on a very familiar narrative or story in the Bible. Uh, it's so familiar that if this, even if this is your very first time in church, uh, uh, you, you probably have at least heard of the miracle of Jesus feeding 5,000 with two little fish and five loaves of bread. It is that familiar, y'all. It's so familiar that I'm almost ashamed to even bring it up to you today. And I know some of y'all probably looking at me like, two fish and five, that's all he got to preach is two fish, and we've been hearing that for years. But I wanted to share it with you today because um, uh, what caught my attention when I looked at it this time is that out of the 40 miracles of Jesus that are recorded in the Bible, this miracle, unlike any of the others, takes place on the heels of a personal tragedy within the life of Jesus Christ. Y'all, uh, Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist, uh, has been beheaded. Y'all, what, 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 what a tragedy. Ha has been beheaded. John the Baptist has been killed. And just prior to our text, Jesus gets word that his cousin is dead. And so now on the heels of this personal tragedy that takes place in Jesus' life, Jesus now performs a miracle. <laughs> now, Pastor Kelly, when I looked at this, I could not help but to wonder. Uh, I wonder if Jesus is trying to teach us here that sometimes our ministry is birthed out of our misery. I hmm, think I just said something. Let me try it again. I wonder if he's trying to teach us that sometimes our ministry is birthed out of our misery because Jesus, even in the midst of his misery, he now performs a miracle. And I wanted to bring that to you to give you your first opportunity to shout in here today uh, if you're shoutable. Uh, Y'all listen to say, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're up against. Watch this. I don't care how miserable you may be right now. Here comes your first chance to shout. If you let God, that's the key right there. If you let God, watch this, even in the midst of your misery, we serve a God. That's a shout cue right there. We serve a God that can work a miracle in the midst of your ministry. Have I got a witness? If you believe he'll do it, go ahead and shout, yes, he will. Y'all, as, as I looked at this text, I noticed that in order for Jesus to perform this miracle of uh, feeding 5,000 with two little fish and five loaves of bread, uh, Jesus has to maximize this meal. Yeah, yeah, two fish, five loaves of bread. In other words, he has to bring the best out of this meal. He, he has to make this meal, y'all, be all that it can be. And y'all, so today, I come preaching today on divine assignment to suggest to you, as the thesis of my little message today, 
that uh, the same thing that Jesus does to bring the best out of this meal is the same thing that Jesus does to bring the best out of you and I. Woo, press pause, rewind, press play. The same thing that Jesus does to bring the best out of this meal is the same thing that he does to bring the best out of you and I. And listen, you ain't shouting already like you should be, but maybe it's because you don't realize it, but I'm going to let you know there's better in you. Matter of fact, your neighbor ain't listening to me. Somebody help me preach. Look at a few people around you and just tell them there's better in you. Go ahead and encourage them. Don't be scared. Tell them it's, there's better in you. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I'm preaching to somebody. There's a better man in you. There's a better woman in you. There's a better boy in you. There's a better girl in you. There's a better mother in you. There's a better father in you. There's a better son in you. Uh, Y'all going to catch it in a minute. There's a better daughter in you. There's a better member in you. There's a better minister in you. There's a better leader in you. There's a better disciple in you. And what God is doing in your life is he's doing some things to bring the best out of you. Are you here with me? Y'all, y'all as, as I looked at this text, I noticed several things that Jesus done uh, in this one verse, just one verse, and I'm going to take my seat. One verse, several things that Jesus done uh, in this one verse. Anybody interested? Yes. Come on, don't fool me now. Have you got just a few minutes? Watch this. The first thing I discovered in this text that the Lord did uh, in order to, to, to bring the best out of this meal, to do this miracle of feeding 5,000 with two little fish and five loaves of bread. The first thing he does is uh, he took the bread, here it is, and he blessed the bread. Mm -hmm. That's my first point. Uh, help me preach, shout it back at me, say he blessed the bread. Uh, Jesus blessed the bread. Uh, here in our text, verse 19, and we ain't going no further than verse 19. Verse 19 says that lets us know that Jesus commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass, uh, and, and he took the took the, uh, the, the, the bread, and he took the fish, and looking up to heaven, the first thing that Jesus does is he blesses the bread. Watch now, watch now. I'm coming to get you. Uh, because uh, this shouts me. I don't know if it's going to shout you or not, but this shouts me uh, just thinking about that because according to John chapter 6, the bread that Jesus blessed was barley bread. Barley bread. Uh, you, you've heard that before, that term, bar barley bread. But maybe you don't know much about barley bread. Barley bread, barley bread was, was the cheap bread. Mm -hmm. uh, barley bread was the bread that poor folk ate. Yeah, bar 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 barley bread was considered to be low budget bread. Yeah, uh, uh, rich folk didn't eat barley bread. Uh, barley bread was reserved for, for poor people and cattle. Stay with me now. Uh, barley bread was cheap, low budget, of poor quality, almost worthless. And Jesus takes something that's cheap, low budget, of poor quality, almost worthless, and he lifts it up to heaven and he blesses bad bread. Now see, I told you it shouted me. It may not shout the rest of y'all, cause see some of y'all, uh, y'all can't y'all can't shout on this right here, cause you've been good all of your life. Uh, but I need about seventy of us in here that can look back over our life and be honest enough to admit that there's been times that the grains of our life was of low quality. Uh -huh. Where my honest folk at? Come on, it's more of you in here than that. Uh, well, our grains of our life was of low quality, but let's have church right here. Is there anybody here like me that's thankful that God can still bless low budget bread? Text says, I'm just looking at the text. I'm a slave to the text. And the text says, Jesus looks up to heaven and he takes something that's almost worthless and he blesses it. 
Watch now. The word, the word blessed there uh, in our text uh, 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 comes from the Greek word eulogio. Eulogio. Uh, eulogio is where we get our English word eulogy from. And contrary to what some folk think, to eulogize doesn't mean to preach. Uh, eulogy means to speak well of. Uh, speak well of. Uh, that wasn't no shade thrown nowhere. That was just for, uh, uh, that's just between us, between us. Uh, uh, eulogy means to speak well of. Je watch, Jesus looks up to heaven and he eulogizes the bread. He looks up to heaven and he says something good about bad bread. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, listen, who can I preach to in here today? Uh, do me a favor, help me. Tell your neighbor, I, I, I need you to have a little attitude right here. Tell your neighbor, you ain't got to say nothing good about me. Go ahead, tell them like you really mean it. You ain't got to tell them I serve a God that will lift me up and speak well of me. Let me ask you, won't he do it? Somebody shout yes. He lifts up the bread and he blesses it. Now remember, I told you the same thing he does with this bread, the same thing he does with you and I. He lifts up the bread and he blesses it. He lifts up the bread and he blesses it. Now watch this. That means you can't get mad at the bread for being blessed. Because the bread didn't ask to be blessed. Come on, talk to me. All the bread did was be, was be there. It, it, uh, uh, the bread was just in the right place at the right time. And because it was in the right place at the right time, it became the recipient of the blessing. Come closer, come closer, because y'all, you do know I ain't even talking about the bread, that bread. I'm, <laughs> but ain't I talking about you? Come on, where my honest folk at? Because if truth be told, you know you don't deserve to be as blessed as you are. I'm looking around at you. You, you don't deserve to have all that you have. Hey, uh, because if truth be told, the grains of your life did not or should not have brought forth all the favor that God has on your life. Have I got some help in here? But here's your shout right here. God chose to bless you anyhow. Y'all ain't shouting. He chose to bless you anyhow. He chose to bless you anyhow. Hey, can I give you permission to go ahead and be arrogant for a moment? and just look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, hey, God blessed me anyhow. Go ahead, brag to him, tell him, God blessed me anyhow. Is there anybody here who has an anyhow blessing on your life? Okay, watch this. Let me see if I can shout you with this right here. Uh, uh, when I say that uh, since the bread, since the bread didn't ask to be blessed, then watch this. Then the bread don't have to try to justify why it is blessed. Yo, because you got some folks, why did you get the car? Why did you get the house? Why did you get the job? Why did you get the promotion? Uh, why did you get hey, why did you get the call to preach at first church on Sunday morning? Hey, all I know is that it's because God chose to bless me anyhow. Listen, I know I don't deserve it. I know I'm not worthy of it, but that's why I praise God the way I praise God. 
Watch this, because ain't no praise, and I know that ain't good English, but I'm trying to emphasize, ain't no praise like the praise from somebody who knows that they don't deserve to be blessed. So watch this. All of you who are in here who feel like you deserve to be blessed, you just sit there quietly in your seat, and for the next 30 seconds, I need those of us who know that we're blessed even though we don't deserve to be blessed, to open up your mouth and give God a thank you for my I don't deserve to be blessed. Glory! I'm I don't deserve it. Elder, I don't deserve it. But God bless me. Anyhow. Anyhow, okay. All right. All right, sit down, sit down, sit down. Get somewhere and sit down. Get somewhere and sit down. Watch this. I needed you to get your praise on right there because Jesus, yeah, anyhow, Jesus lifted up the bread and he blessed it. Lifted up the bread and he blessed it. Then the text says, this is why I needed you to go and get your shout out. Because <laughs> then the text says, after he blessed it, he broke it. That's in your Bible too. He broke yeah. Some of y'all, some of y'all, uh, do as I tell them at Fresh Wind all the time. Uh, you read too fast, you miss more than you catch. And uh, some of y'all reading too fast, and y'all had already gotten to the broken, and that's why you couldn't praise them on the blessed. Uh, but I need you to slow down your reading and praise God for blessing you. And you're going to find out in just a moment. After he blessed it, then he broke it. That's my second point. Shout it back at me say, He broke the bread. He broke the bread. Uh, 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 he, he broke the bread. Stay with me. The same bread that he blessed. <laughs> he didn't go get some new bread. The, mother, the same bread that he blessed is the same bread that he broke. Which means that the blessing on the bread couldn't stop the breaking of the bread. I got preachers over here. <laughs> Preach, Bishop. I'm doing the best I can, y'all. Uh, as blessed as the bread was, Jesus still decided to break what he had just blessed. Now, wait a minute, because see, that puts us in a, a chronological quagmire. Don't act like y'all weren't impressed by that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got to stay focused. I got to stay focused. Because if Jesus blessed the bread and then broke the bread, that means that the bread went into the breaking process Already blessed. Ooh. Can we have some church right here? Hey, you want to know why you still have joy after all the hell you? Oh, can I say that? After, after all the stuff you stuff, after all the things you've been through. Come on, where my real folk at? You want to know why you still have your right mind? Why you ain't cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Hey, you want to know why you haven't slitting your wrist, taken an overdose, put a gun to your head, jumped off a bridge, and committed suicide? You want to know why other folk died having the same operation you had, but you came out giving God praise? Somebody asked me why glad y'all act because God blessed you before he broke you.
you went in already blessed. Jesus blessed it. Then he broke it. Watch the order. Don't miss the chronological order. He blessed it. Then he broke it. Can I tell you, you ought to praise God right now for knowing when to break you. What? Because what if God had broken you before you got saved? What if God had broken you before you got word in you? What if God had broken you before you were anointed? Can I get you to go ahead and give God a radical praise just for knowing when to break you? See, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about you. You know, uh, I'm going to say I don't know about y'all, but I know y'all ain't, ain't right. That ain't correct. Uh, y'all catch it later. Don't worry about it. But I, I, I don't know about you, but, but, but uh, if he had broken me at the wrong time, I would have never bounced back. Come on, anybody thinking like me? Woo! If he, if, he had, if he had broken me uh, at the wrong time, I never would have survived the break. If he had broken me at the wrong time, he never would have gotten the best out of me. But I'm thankful to God that he knows when to break us. Stay with me, stay with me. I'm reading the text slow, reading it slow because I don't want to miss too much. Uh, 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 he, he breaks the bread. I told you, I tell, I tell him at home, read too fast, miss more than you catch. Uh, he breaks the bread. No, he, he, now don't focus so much on the breaks. Uh, he breaks the bread. Uh, what about he breaks the bread? Uh, uh, Pastor C. Dexter Wise, you know, prolific, pro prolific preacher and teacher, and uh, uh, he taught a class one time, and he said, you can look at the same text, and what you see depends on where you place your camera. <laughs> like if you're in a room, camera get a certain angle, you move the camera, you get a different, y'all understand, right? He said, same way with the text, depending on how you look at a text, where you move your camera, depends on what you see. Some of us just got our camera focused on he breaks the bread. Uh, some of us got to focus on he breaks the bread. Uh, but what I want you to focus now on is he breaks the bread. Y'all got it? He breaks. 5,000 men, not counting women and children, 12 disciples, but he, Jesus, breaks the bread. Here's my point, Pastor Kelly. Out of all of the many people out there that could have broken the bread, Jesus broke the bread. I thought of that O'Neill twin song years ago that said, he, he dropped the charges. He dropped the charges. Jesus, no, uh, they ought to change it now. Uh, or we ought to change it and say, he broke the bread. He broke the bread. Never mind. I, was, uh, I had a moment within myself. I thought we could just be open and honest, and I was just, just sharing. That ain't even in my notes. I was, I was just thinking. I was just think, thinking out loud. My wife told me to keep some of my thoughts to myself. I, I gotta, but he, he, where was I? He, he broke the bread. Uh, yeah. All the people that, out there that could have broken it, Jesus broke the bread. Watch this. Come closer, y'all. Um, if I have to be broken, Y'all already feel where I'm going, huh? If I just got to be broken, I don't know about you, but I want Jesus to do the breaking. Woo! Let me say that again. If I got to be broken, I want Jesus 
to do the Can I tell y'all why? Somebody ask me why. Glad y'all asked. Y'all, because in order for Jesus to break the bread, he comes to shout. He has to put his hands on it. I ain't being deep or nothing, but there were no knives. There were no cutting utensils. So in order for Jesus to break the bread, he had to literally put his hands on it. And y'all, what if can I get about 20 of y'all to shout with me right here when I say, I don't mind God breaking me as long as he got his hands on me. And, hey, and watch this. In order for Jesus to have his hands on the bread, he had to wait until everybody else took their hands off the bread. I ain't got time to work with that like I want to, but uh, in order for Jesus to have his hands on it, he had to wait on everybody. Because Jesus blessed the bread and he broke the bread, but he didn't bring the bread. No, the bread belonged to that little boy, which means that several other hands had touched the bread before Jesus touched the bread, such as you know, the little boy's mother who made the little boy's lunch. Uh, the lady, uh, she, she touched the bread. After the lady touched the bread, the lad, the little boy, he, he, he touched the bread. Uh, after the lad touched the bread, uh, the leaders, the disciples, they, they, they touched the bread. After the leaders touched the bread, then, then the Lord, Jesus, touched the bread. Now watch. I feel like preaching right here. Uh, when, when the bread was in the lady's hand, it was enough for one. When the bread was in the lad's hands, it was enough for one. When the bread was in the leader's hands, it was enough for one. Here comes a shout. But when the bread got in the Lord's hands, <laughs> because whatever the Lord puts his hands on, he maximizes it. Whatever he puts his hands on, he brings the best out of it. Hey, I know I had you shout already, but can you give God a praise one more time for having his hands on you? Where my quartet folk at? Uh, Lee Williams, uh, uh, he's gone on now, but he had a song that said, I, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord laid his hands on me. If there's anybody here glad that God has his hands on you, go ahead and give God a thank you for having your hands on me. Pray. Woo! Hey, make me feel at home. I need about 20 of y'all to just jump up, sit back down, pump your fist one time and say, I feel that. I, I feel he, he's got his hands. His hands on me. I'm almost done. After the Lord blessed the bread. And after he broke the bread, text Taylor to teach, teach us that then he bestows the bread. text says he gave it to his disciples and his disciples to the multitude. He blessed the bread. He broke the bread and then he bestowed the bread. That's my third point. Come on, shout it back at me. Say he bestowed the bread. He bestowed the bread. Bestowed the bread. Please, please don't miss the order. Don't miss the order. He blesses the bread. Then he broke the bread. The, he broke the bread that he had just blessed. And then, after he broke the bread he had just blessed, then he bestowed the bread. He gave it to his disciples. 
Can I suggest to y'all today, on the way to my seat, First Church, thank y'all for being so kind to me, uh, but uh, can I suggest to you that the reason why Jesus takes the time to break the bread that he had just blessed is so that others can benefit from the broken pieces. Is that making sense to you? He didn't just take the one piece and feed 5,000 men, not counting women and children. No, he broke it so others could benefit from it. Listen, I don't know who I'm preaching to. I just know I'm preaching to somebody, though. Somebody may be questioning the breaking process. I feel, I feel my help coming. Uh, Lord, why? <laughs> why do I have to be broken? Lord, why am I being broken on my job? Lord, why am I being broken in my family? Lord, why am I being broken in my relationships? Lord, why am I being broken in my finances? And God sent me to First Church this morning to let you know that the reason you have to be broken is because there's others who are depending on your broken pieces. <laughs> so that ain't quite, man, I used to be, I don't have all my strength back. So I can't holler like I used to try to holler. Some folks say I couldn't holler then. I was just hollering. But, <laughs> but I wonder, is there anybody here like me? I've gotten to the place now. I'm going to just talk this out, Winston. Uh, uh, I've gotten to the place now that I don't ask God uh, why he broke me. Mm -mm. Because of this text right here, I don't worry about why he broke me. I just start thanking God that he broke me. Because see, I don't know if you realize, like I realized that my praise was born out of my brokenness. My worship has been birthed out of my brokenness. My ministry was born out of my brokenness. And now, who can witness with me when I say that now, because we've been broken, when we come to church, we don't need nobody to sing us happy. We don't need nobody to pray us happy. We don't need nobody to preach us happy. No, because we've been broken. Watch this. Now our worship is for real. Do me a favor. Tell your neighbor, you don't know my story. Uh, Y'all remember that song? You don't know my story, nor the things that I've been through. You can't feel my pain and what I had to go through to get here. You'll never understand my praise, so don't try to figure it out because my worship is for real. Have I got a witness here? Have I got a witness here? Hey, tell somebody, I've gone through the fire. I've been through the flood. I've been broken in the pieces. See lightning flashing from above, but through it all, I remembered that he loved me and he can, and he'll never put more on you than you can bear. Good morning, First Church. May the Lord God bless you real good. But I thank God for brokenness, for brokenness saved my life. Hey, and I don't know if you realize it or not, but brokenness saved your life. <laughs> because where am I saved, folk at? Because Jesus was broken. Now our life is saved. Y'all, Jesus was broken on Calvary. Uh, his hands were broken by the nails. Uh, his, his side was broken by the spear. His head was broken by the crown. But I thank God that I was blessed because of the brokenness. He died and God raised him on the third day. Have I got a witness? So now my prayer, I don't know about yours, but my prayer is, Lord, bless me. Lord, break me, and Lord, bestow me so I can be a blessing to somebody else. Here's my clothes. Here's my clothes. Some that I, I, I become really fond of, and uh, Tracy and them, they ain't like it that well. Uh, so, but I liked it. 
I like, I like to call it a word. They, they ain't like it because it's like a nursery rhyme sounding song. Kirk Franklin, Maverick City. But the words of it said, bless me, bless me. Bless me, God, indeed. Death has been defeated. He is our victory. Here it is. Bless me, bless me. God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. Let all these folks that's with me, God, have everything they need. I like the second verse that said, favor, favor, let it fall on me till I'm the conversation of all my enemies. Favor, favor, let it, God, not just for me, but so everyone around me can have everything they need. God, let all these folks that's with me have everything they need. God bless you.